Welcome back to, I know I'm supposed to say the Dr. Bo Show. I don't think this is going to work as a Dr. Bo Show. I think this needs to be called Farm TV, which was an option. I apologize to people that think it should be called the Dr. Bo Show. Maybe we'll have a coup and we'll revisit it. The reason I'm changing it is I'm gonna make this episode bi-weekly or the show bi-weekly, which also correlates with our newsletter called the Farmer's Almanac, which you can subscribe to on chirofarm.com. That way I can use the show to talk about all the things that I'm doing and reading and watching and then I can go put all the links and send it out to everybody in a newsletter so we have a lot of information come out to people in two different avenues. Um, and I don't know if the Dr. Bo show just fits. So I appreciate the votes. You let me know if you just absolutely hate farm TV, but I think it fits with the Farmer's Almanac. So go subscribe, get all the details about what we're gonna talk about in this episode. Tip off, I just got on the run. It's great to have drink mixes. You know, depending on what your goal is, you got Osmo, you got Noon, you got about a million others. But sometimes it's good to just have some lemon and lime, natural electrolytes, uh, a little bit of sugar, and some kind of salt, right? So you can make your own drink a lot cheaper. Maybe it's better for you, but also it should be dependent on what your goal is. Um, I don't think you're gonna run an ultra marathon off of lemon lime water with a dash of salt. First, we have an update. So this week, uh, we're back in the clinic, very limited hours. So by the time you watch this, we'll only be in the clinic uh, Wednesday, uh, April 15th from 7 to 10 a.m. And then the 17th, we're gonna, on Friday, be in there from 8 to 12 p.m. Uh, moving forward to the following Monday, we're gonna be open normal hours. Still seeing a limited range of people. We're not gonna see kids under 14 years of age people over 65 years of age, and we're not gonna see anybody that has been sick in the past two to three weeks, or family members, uh, uh, primary family members that have been sick. Just trying to mitigate risk as much as we can, but also help out those people that are hurting, have been injured, you know, post-surgery, whatever it is, still trying to help out our clients as best we can. So look uh, forward to seeing you guys in the office. Hi, Bo. So my question is about the two breathing techniques taught and the Oxygen Advantage and Brian McKenzie's courses and content. They both focus on CO2 tolerance, but the breathing practices and some of the tests you use are a little bit different. So how would you compare and contrast them? Is there one that you prescribe to more? And if you use both, which I'm pretty sure you do, how do you integrate those into your training and kind of for what purposes and kind of how do you use them to complement each other? Thank you. That was a great question that Sam put out there. And just like a lot of things in the training and performance world, breathing could be, you know, reduced down to very simplistic explanations or it could be, you know, taken into a day long lecture like an Art of Breath sem uh, seminar. All I want to say here is uh, in Sam's original question, he asked about like the oxygen advantage techniques. Uh, that Patrick McCown writes about, which are really popularized methods of the Buteco method. And then a lot of the things that Brian McKenzie talks about in uh, you know, his social media and his classes called the Art of Breath. This is how I look at it, and this is as simple as I think I can put it. Uh, the oxygen advantage, yeah, talks a lot about increasing CO2 tolerance and this idea that people are chronic hyperventilators and that's breathing too much and too often. And we see drills like breathe light to breathe right and reduce volume breathing and things like this. Think of the oxygen advantage as working on posture by working on posture, being aware of it and trying to train it. I think that has some effect for sure, right? If I am sitting slouched and I think about sitting up straight, I'm changing something. But is that the best method? I don't know. You know, um, I'll still have people tape their kid's mouth shut if they're, you know, uh, sleeping like a zombie and catching flies. I'll close my daughter's mouth if I see her doing that. So there's some of those things that hold true across the board that both Patrick and Brian, I'm not going to speak for them, would probably agree on. Where I see some of the stuff that the art of breath people are doing that's a little bit different is it's like weightlifting to me. So we do a rehab drill, we do a deadlift, we do sprints to create some change and that change over time could have a result, like for example, let's say I'm focusing on my posture, well, I could also go do some planks, some deadlifts, some squats, and I'm working on postural stability and therefore I have better posture. When we see some of the uh, extreme breath hold work and these uh, 
you know, uh, the testing measures that are used, like uh, Sam brought up, like the Bolt test, the blood oxygen level test that's popularized in Patrick McCown's book versus like the max exhale hold test that Brian McKenzie used. We're still looking at utilizing the available oxygen in your blood. It's just at what degree, right? So the extremes. It's no different to me than if I look at an FMS on somebody versus like an FCS, like a fundamental capacity screen. One, I'm looking at movement, which is the bare bones to be able to do the capacity part. Capacity is looking at power output and be able to drive power and speed and things like that. So I just think it's different sides of the exact same spectrum. I don't think it's actually coming at it two different ways. I, I think they're divergent for sure. Hope that answers your questions. As always, I love getting video questions. So you guys, you can send an email. Uh, you can DM me with a video question, please do, and I'll try to answer it on here as best I can. Research. So this is a somewhat interesting article. Uh, it's a pilot study, so it's the first one done looking at this, so take it for what it is. But the title of this research article was, The Effect of Vitamin D Supplementation on Serum Total 25OH Levels and Biochemical Markers of Skeletal Muscle in Runners. Now what is this looking at? This is looking at if vitamin D supplementation in endurance runners decreased Three things, pro-inflammatory cytokines, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and creatine kinase post-run. And it did, all three of them. It had a somewhat marked decrease, a 0.03 p-value, which is decent. Uh, but like I said, small sample size, pilot study, does that mean anything? That's the big deal here. When we're reading research, when you say, oh man, it had decreased effects on all these pro-inflammatory agents, well, exercising creates inflammation. It's a catabolic experience to then create adaptation or anabolism, a, a chance to have supercompensation on the back end. So what we want to ask is, is it beneficial to decrease those things? One thing we know about uh, immediate intake of things like protein or jumping right into a cryo chamber or an ice bath is that we don't want to create, decrease those inflammatory markers too fast because we blunt the hormetic response of going from catabolism to anabolism. So take it for what it is, just thought it was an interesting study that people are starting to look at. Uh, things like vitamin D, which should be re-termed pro-hormone D. It's a pro-hormone, it's a precursor to a lot of ex uh, processes throughout our body. What I'm watching, uh, if I'm watching something, it's usually a fictitious story because I'm watching it for entertainment value. But I just happened to see Dave Chappelle's Mark Twain Prize Award. Uh, on Netflix. It's just interesting. It's a lot of uh, broken up clips of Dave doing a show at a comedy club in DC, other comedians doing uh, shows, uh, talking about Dave and then him accepting the award at the Kennedy Center. And just, I thought it was very interesting that one common theme throughout the show was how many people said that uh, Dave Chappelle is not uh, only the most intellectual comedian, but the most intellectual person they've ever worked with or met. And, it, you know, he's playing the piano at one point. He can dive on anything from politics to love to, you know, whatever it is. He's just an extremely smart guy. And, uh, you know, I want to always, like, put something in these little, like, what am I reading, what am I watching that matters to whoever's watching. What I'm probably talking to as a clinician, a Cairo PT, maybe somebody who's interested in movement or health. What's that matter for us? Uh, humor is a tool. So when we think of, like, these ancient comedies, like a Roman comedy, it was a spin on drama, right? They were, uh, comedy was looking at something from a different perspective. That's what a comedian does nowadays. They, they spin the perspective 180 or 360 degrees, and because of that, it's humorous. So they use humor as the tool of delivery to make things more palatable. As a clinician, we can do that sometimes. It doesn't mean you have to be funny, but what we need to be able to do is shift perspective for our patients, for our clients, for our athletes, to get them to understand things, to create motivation, to create different internal dialogue, to create what? Change. So it doesn't mean you have to be, I don't think anybody's going to be <laughs> as funny as Dave Chappelle, so don't try to be, but use perspective shift to create change. Things I'm digging. First thing I'm digging, this shoe. So I am not, I wish I was, I'm not sponsored by Ultra. But if I were, I would order a couple more of these. So this is the Ultra Viho. This is a, a 26 millimeters of uh, foam EVA. Or this is a mix actually, because it's got a rubber base, but ethyl vinyl acetate underfoot. Zero drop, like everything. I thought it was interesting because this is a road running shoe, but it looks like a cross trainer. It's reminiscent of like a Reebok Nano. Uh, my only complaint, 
The lacing system, uh, again, it's got round laces. It tends to be a little loose. There's a little bit of slag going downhill, especially if you're running as fast as me. No, I'm joking. I think anybody it would slide. The thing is, there's not enough lace in the way that the eyelets are to create a lace lock very well, like you run out of lace. Um, so I haven't been able to do a good lace lock. And does it, everybody know what a lace lock is? Maybe in our next video, we'll go over a lace lock. Uh, yeah, good shoe. Other thing I'm digging. See if this will go into focus. The full focus planner. Uh, this is developed by Michael Hyatt. I'm a nerd, as you can tell, because I like a planner. But to me, this is like if I'm uh, using like a true coach app run. I'm trying to train an athlete. We talk about periodization. We talk about chronic training load and acute training load. Like we're moving from this annual plan to our daily plan. This is the first planner I've ever found that creates where you take your annual goals, quarterly goals, monthly, weekly, daily, and it helps you distill those down. Also helps take care of the problem that I have of creating a massive to-do list by having kind of a weekly roundup where you break things down, uh, sift things out. So I'm a big fan of this. Now, if you're gonna write in something studly like this, I'm really digging, you gotta be a, you gotta be a nerd. You gotta use a Sharpie pen or you gotta use the Uniball uh, Deluxe Micro. They're both 0.5. If you ain't mess with the 0.5, you're up in 0.7 or 1.0. I don't even wanna to talk to you. And I'm always digging, which if they wanna sponsor me, is Topo Chico. I gotta take a little break. Favorite carbonated water out there. Delicious, put a little lime in it, whoo! What am I reading? I'm always reading a lot of things and I read in paper format using a Kindle reader and also using my iPad so I can create notes on the fly. That's one thing I really, I guess if I'm digging something else, it's a Kindle uh, because you can underline, you can go back, look at your notes very easily. It makes it a lot easier than then going back and reviewing, highlighting and trying to find all that stuff. First book I'm reading, uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. I rate each of these books on my Bow Beard book system zero to five. I give this like a two and a half. It's just kind of repetitive, um, and I'm not all the way through any of these books I'm about to talk about, uh, so I don't want to give them an unfair rating, but two and a half stars or bow beard rating system, whatever that is. I'm just gonna give a quote from each one. So outcomes are about what you get, processes are about what you do, identity is about what you believe. Okay, so I think that's a really good quote. My next book, The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek's first uh, home run book was Start With Why. This is a follow-up. Not as strong as his first book, most second books aren't. Really good quote out of this one. A just cause is a specific vision of a future state that does not yet exist. So appealing that people are willing to make sacrifices in order to help advance that vision. I found this to be a great quote because, uh, like Simon Sinek's first book, it's kind of funny that, you know, or ironic that he has this statement in there because it's start with why. It's almost like find your because. It's not necessarily find the cause, right? Uh, because is like why I do something. The cause is like why everybody, like a lot of people, an organization, your employees, your team would do something. So I encourage people to find the cause. And then within the cause, you can find your because. We all may want to save the planet and save the environment, but your why is different than my why. And I think that that's really what I'm getting out of the infinite game is creating this infinite mindset surrounding a cause. Let's try to keep a fiction book going. Uh, Paulo Coelho is my favorite author of my favorite book and that is The Alchemist. Just great book, short read, good story. Right? It's fiction, it's just a good allegory for a lot of parts of our uh, human life. So this book is called The Aleph, or Aleph, uh, and this quote says, they say that in the second before our death, each of us understands the real reason for our existence, and out of that moment, heaven or hell is born. Pretty profound, right? He's saying that in the moment before you die, you see, did you fulfill your purpose or not? You can imagine how that would either be like bliss, like man, did it, crushed it, hit it, or oh gosh, I was supposed to do something else. You know what would be a good way to start making sure that doesn't happen? Find your cause. Yep, go read The Infinite. No, I don't know. I don't. They're both good books. Uh, Infinite Game Rating, three. The Aleph, I'm three quarters of the way through it. I give it a three. It's more of a narrative story of Paulo himself uh, going across Trans-Siberian Railroad, uh, book signings. It's kind of a weird book. I'm revisiting 
clinical rehabilitation, pelvic collage, the creator of DNS. I've been through it once. When I say been through it, I didn't read this cover to cover. I went through the parts that I wanted to, and now I'm going back through and reviewing. You, in a textbook, you always pull out things that you didn't before because there's just so much there. Uh, just a really interesting quote, which a quote within a quote. This is a study in the book. In just one statement, it says, postural activity accompanies movement like a shadow. I talked a little bit about posture earlier. People are always asking me, like, what's the best posture? Like, how should I sit? What should I do with my hands? Like, whatever. And it's, you know, movement dictates posture. Posture doesn't dictate movement. You'd be like, well, I heard that if I sit at a desk all day that I'm going to, you know, no. If you can move a certain way, and I've talked about this before in another video, of if I have adequate movement, I'm going to adopt a better posture because I have a bigger range of expression of movement. So I just thought that was an interesting quote. I'm also, or I also just got my hands, not really, uh, it's a digital copy, so I'm, my hands are on my Kindle, but I got my hands on. The third edition of Rehabilitation of the Spine by Craig Liebenson. Excited to get into this one. This is one of the first books that I read outside of the normal curriculum of my chiropractic schooling uh, all the way back in like Try 1 or Try 2. Uh, I like Craig's books, um, we'll see if this one stays the same, because it's like a flight of beer. It gives you each chapter's like different ideas on this big cause, right? Like, I think uh, if I'm quoting correctly, Craig Lehmanson's cause is creating a positive movement experience for people, or a, a positive experience with movement, I don't know, something like that. Sorry, Craig, if I butchered that. But it's like a flight of beer. Each chapter's just a different, it's like a Leon Chaitao's uh, Recognizing Treating Breathing Disorders. It's just a little piece of something different in each chapter, so you kind of wet your palate and then you can dive into it deeper. But each chapter is deep in itself. So excited to get into that one. And what I really want to talk about today is something that everybody's talking about, which is obviously COVID-19, coronavirus, but I don't, I'm not an epidemiologist, I'm not an infectious disease specialist. So I just want to talk about, you know, how's this affecting us as a society and how is it going to change things? And obviously I don't have a crystal ball. I don't, you know, I'm not going to, I don't know what's going to happen, but what could happen, right? Some positives that could happen. I put up a really good article by a guy named Julio uh, Gambuto called Prepare for the Ultimate Gaslighting. I, I had to look up what gaslighting meant. I kind of knew, but I want to make sure. So gaslighting is manipulating by psychological means uh, people into questioning their own sanity. So it's basically like, whoa, is what a... I, am, am I freaking out here? Like, I thought this was true, but now I don't, I'm not sure. Welcome to, like, the media, right? You can put on two different stations. They're saying the same thing at two different ends of the spectrum. You don't know it's true. And when it comes to issues of science, we should stick with uh, what Neil deGrasse Toss Tyson says. Is like, science is science is science, right? There's a scientific process. And he always says, uh, again, saying Neil deGrasse Neil deGrasse Tyson. I have a really hard time with that. Always says he doesn't debate because there is no debate with science, right? There's postulations and hypothesis, but then they need to be studied through the scientific process. And what you see is, is that there's just a bunch of conjecture and debate about this whole thing. And what we need to realize is that the one thing that is certain uh, that this author of this article talks about is that we're getting what he calls the great pause. We're getting a time for great reflection, right? To, to look inside of ourselves and kind of say, is the world going to change? Am I going to change with it? Am I going to change regardless of if the world changes, societally, societally economically, uh, you know, government, whatever it is? Are you going to make change based on this? And me coming from a healthcare uh, practitioner standpoint, hopefully we realize that one of the best ways to ward off things like this is just being healthy and taking your health in your own hands and not allowing the bureaucracy or the healthcare system to be your savior because what we're finding out is sometimes it's not. And most often it's not. And uh, it's gonna be up to you, right? So if it's up to you, what do you need? You need good information. You need unbiased information. You need to understand things. You need to understand how your body works. That's what I'm trying to do through this show. I'll leave you with two more quotes along that vein. Henry David Thoreau, not until we are lost do we begin to understand ourselves. I think we're all a bit lost right now. Things are just wacky. But that gives us, like I said, a time to sit back and like look at things, like we said earlier, from a different perspective. Aldous Huxley said, facts do not cease to exist because they are ignored. Science is science is science. Last thing before I wrap it up here, Earth Day is next Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm going to challenge everybody for Earth Day to go out on a run, a hike, a jog, a walk, a yog, whatever it is. Pick up trash. Take a trash bag, take a backpack, take a fanny pack, uh, whatever it is. Pick up trash, take a picture of it, post it on your social media, maybe tag me in it, whatever. Come up with some fancy hashtag, uh, I don't know, trash tag, hashtag, I don't know, whatever it is, whatever, right? Pick up some trash, take a picture of it, it's Earth Day. Clean up the planet. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have questions, send them to me in video form, drbobeard at gmail.com, at drbobeard on social media. I hope you learned something today that makes you better than before.